Welcome back to another edition of the Night Report Podcast. I guess it's kind of like an instant reaction edition today. Uh, I'm Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is Richie Schneiderite. The, uh, the football schedule for next season has been announced. Um, and we have a, a really interesting transfer portal target to talk about. Uh, so this might be uh, a little different than most episodes. But first, uh, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online uh, basketball is back. Bet Online reigns your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends on Bet Online. And as your continued source for all your sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. It's always the best and the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events, whether that's NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, or even golf. You could head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. I hit a nice little uh, a little be- NBA uh, player parlay last night. Five legs. It was around. There you go. Luca. Uh, he scored. I, I think I had him at like thirty six and six, and he went well over that. And then I had uh, a three point uh, portion of that with Andrew Wiggins and, and Steph Curry both at that. So nice little right. hit for me last night. Can't beat that. I hit a four legger uh, this weekend in football, so nice. I was pretty happy. It was only like five for like a hundred, but I'm a little mad I didn't put more, but. NFL? Do do? Yeah, uh, Raiders, money line, uh, Giants, Giants spread. I wasn't confident. Giants, <laughs> Giants have been like probably like the the hottest team in terms of beating the spread outside of like the Falcons all season. So yeah, it's pretty wild. But uh, yeah, we're also sponsored by Adam Goldman. He's a franchise coach. So basically, if you're a displaced corporate exec or you kind of want to just put your career in your own hands, hit him up and he can kind of get you started in uh, with your own franchise, whether that be a Dunkin' Donuts, a McDonald's, or anything under uh, under the sun pretty much uh he's a scarlet knights fan a night report member uh watch on hills native so he's a jersey guy through and through so uh give him a call today at 844-800-3726 or also check him out at franchisecoach.net awesome so for this schedule i think i think it makes sense to kind of break it up into monthly chunks so let's talk september first um yeah. so Rutgers opens the year uh at home versus northwestern then they have another home game versus Temple, another home game versus Virginia Tech. And then we start our uh, road season at Michigan on September 23rd. And then we play our final game of September versus Wagner on September 30th. Tell me a little bit about what you think of this this opening part of the schedule, because I, I kind of like how this sets up for Rutgers. So it's interesting. Northwestern's a team that you can't really ever get a feel for. It's like one year they're great, and then the next three years they're, they're shit. And it's like... Yep. I don't know. Fitzgerald's a good coach at the end of the day. Um, I still think that no matter what uh, their record is this year, there's going to be a competitive game. And to open up against a Big Ten opponent should, should get a pretty good crowd. So that's a, yep. that's always a plus. H- SHI should be relatively filled for this one. Um, the rest of September, Temple should be a win. I, th- I think there's no question about that one. Uh, Virginia Tech, uh, they're obviously pretty bad this year. First year head coach in Brent Pry, who a uh, defensive guy, so you like to think they would make some adjustments there. Uh, although they have been giving up a lot of points this year, and, and they did lose to a very bad Miami team recently by, like, six points. Yep. So, um, And then uh, Michigan, at Michigan, is always a tough one. Uh, they, they look phenomenal this year, and Rutgers hasn't even seen them yet, so it's, it's going to be an interesting game for that. But uh, let's see if they can keep that momentum going. They obviously have a young quarterback, and McCarthy will probably be there next year. Um, and Wagner, Wagner should be a win. So, I mean, three, three games or four, four home games in September. That's huge for crowd wise, because it's going to be nice out for, you would assume for the most part, um, weather, weather wise, and it won't be too cold, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, this is a pretty good start for Rutgers. You could be, uh, I I think you mentioned it to me off the, off the pod, uh, four, one start, maybe, maybe even, yeah, I, I would say that's probably realistic. Uh, it's a good, it's a good start for Rutgers, like great start. Yeah, I don't see any reason why we can't start four and one of the schedule. Uh, our first three opponents, Northwestern Temple and Virginia Tech, are combined five and sixteen this season. With most of their, like Northwestern only has one win, and that was that opening Ireland weekend against Nebraska. Temple we saw Penn State. this year, and they almost beat Penn State. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Virginia Tech's their only wins are against Wofford, who's an FCS team, and uh, Boston College, who we obviously mm-hmm. are also beat. Michigan's going to be tough, but, I mean, Greg Schiano led teams have played Michigan really tough. Obviously, we only have two examples of that. One was the the COVID year where we went to, I think, triple overtime and barely lost. Last mm-hmm. year, we only lost by a touchdown. 
at Michigan, and, and we were driving late in that game where we could have tied it. We had a missed field goal and just kind of shot ourselves in the foot. But we played them really tough. We'll see how this season's game goes. I mean, it's going to be a night game, so, you know, that's an added uh, element to to things. But their quarterback's a huge upgrade over Cade McNamara. I think J.J. Oh, McCarthy's yeah. really, really good. Yeah. Um, but obviously we should beat the shit out of Wagner. So I'm hoping for a 4-1 and start. Uh, but October definitely gets tougher because uh, two of the three games are on the road and they're all Big Ten games. So October 7th, we play at Wisconsin. October 14th, we have a home game against Michigan State. And then to close out October, we have uh, a game at Indiana. Obviously, Indiana is kind of our son at this point. So um, I, I like our chances there. And who knows, they might be dealing with a coaching change given Tom Allen's kind of fallen off there. Uh, what do you think about the, the, the schedule for Rutgers in October? Uh, uh, you kind of just hit the nail on the head on basically all of it. Um, it, it is tough. I'm not going to lie. Michigan State's always a tough one. Um, Wisconsin, at Wisconsin, it's so hard to gauge how that team is going to be next year. We don't even know technically who the coach will be at this point. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. And then Indiana, um, like you mentioned, I don't think Rutgers was off to Indiana in basketball or football since that one guy's tweet saying, like, what oh, Rutgers? What's Rutgers? Yep. Like, all right, dude, relax. Like, it's been, like, what, seven wins in a row in, in, mm -hmm. in both sports? It's that, that's I think we're 7 one against them in the last eight in basketball. And I think. Yeah. It, it's so hard to tell. And I, I want to mention this with, like, just all the teams, even, like, Northwestern and Virginia Tech. Um, it's very hard to tell with the transfer portal being the way it is now. Like, look at Michigan State, for example. Last year, they were well, at the top, uh, near the top of the Big Ten with Kenneth Walker. They lose Kenneth Walker, all of a sudden, they're, like, average. Maybe they find someone else and they, they, they become a good team again. Maybe they don't. That's why it's so hard to judge all these teams, like, especially Power Five, because these guys are always going to add talent. And it's not like yep. adding recruiting talent now. Now you're adding experienced talent from, like, the Western Michigans and the Temples, like what Rutgers does with Temple. Um, it's like you're just picking up like some of the best of the best and from the lower levels and just bringing up to the big leagues and some of it works, some of it doesn't. So it, it's very hard to gauge this, but October could be, uh, I'd probably say two and one given it's at Wisconsin, but I, I you could very easily, or I'm sorry, one and two given that it's at Wisconsin, but, uh, it could, it could very easily be two, two and one. I do, I do count the Indiana win right there. You might have five wins going into a stretch of a well, Ohio State's in there. Stretch of a Iowa, Penn State, Maryland right after that. So maybe it, it's a potential bowl year. I yeah, I see no reason why the schedule isn't a bowl season for Rutgers. Um, I agree. Two and one would probably be like the optimistic outlook for October. Um, so we could very well be six and two heading into November, which is definitely the toughest part of our schedule. Thankfully, after Indiana, uh, on October 21st, we do have a bye before we play Ohio State at home, November 4th. Then we have uh, Iowa, November 11th on the road. Then we play at Penn State, November 18th. And then we finish off the season at home versus Maryland. Uh, real tough stretch throughout through November. I mean, Iowa, we saw this year, their offense sucks, and I don't expect their offense to get any better because <laughs> – Kirk Ferentz has shown he's not going to fire his son, Brian Ferentz, who's leading the offense there. So what do you think about our schedule in November? Oh, I'm mute. My bad. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, like I said before, the, the bye week is technically, what, October 28th? So that's that's yep. nice to get before Ohio State, but it's still Ohio State at the end of the day. That's going to be an extremely tough one. Maybe you get lucky and you get another night game because it's late in the season. You might have a couple wins already. So If we're 6-2, yeah. and two, like we've kind of said as like the high <clears> – <throat> Or I guess we would be. That'd be one, two, three, four, five. Yes, if we're six and two going into Ohio State, that's going to be a night game. I, yeah, I, have no doubt I would assume that. so. Um, which is which is nice because that atmosphere is always different. Um, then uh, Iowa at Iowa, that's tough because like they, I know you can't fire your son, but I, I do think they have to make a change at offensive coordinator over there. It is yeah. pretty rough. Um, but they're always a tough team too, because like one year they're good, and then the next year they're bad, and the next year they're good, and then they're bad, and it's the Big Ten West also, so it's like it's hard to gauge too. Like, are, are they really good? Like, is Illinois good right now? Eh, maybe. Yeah. But it's like it's it's hard to tell with that Big Ten West schedule. Um, at Penn State, Rutgers has been playing Penn State pretty tough over the past couple of years. They haven't gotten a win yet, but it, it is coming. I think eventually. I don't know when. Um, 
I know everyone on the boards and listening to the pods like, yeah, but you cover Penn State. They're going to be so pissed off. Like, no, it's just true. Everyone knows it. Um, you'd think. Uh, maybe not on that message board, but that's beside this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then Maryland. Maryland's your rival. You, you just got to accept it. Make a trophy. I don't care if it's a crab or if it's the, what do you call it? What's that route that goes between New Jersey and Maryland? 95? 95, yeah. Make it like a 95 trophy or something. Like, make it a, a stupid like turnpike sign or something. something. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you, I think yeah, at this point, you're going to play that rivalry a rivalry week every year. You came into conference together. Uh, and, and you're just regional guys. Like You're going to compete against yep. for, for recruits nonstop. So th- this is the rivalry. And it might not be the one fans want, but you can have more than one also. And that's where I think a Michigan State comes into play a little bit. Because Mel yep. Tucker's kind of a dick and stealing Graciano's like every single mantra he's ever used. But it's okay yep. when Fleck does it, but because like, obviously he's from Rutgers, Rutgers guy. But I don't know. That's besides the point. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting schedule for November. It's probably the toughest out of all the months, I, I think, without a doubt. But, uh it it could be ugly. It could be could be a bowl game though, right there at that last yep. game of the season, which it seems like it's coming down to a lot every like almost every season. It's like the last game is Maryland. Oh, that, that, that could be the bowl. That could be the bowl. And now we're doing it again. Yeah, no, it's I, I don't think I, I think two and two is probably the best we can do in November based on the schedule. And I, I think we'd be fine with two and two. Uh, one and three is probably more likely. So. It's probably like a six and six to eight and four type season at best. Um, and you know, who, who knows what Rutgers you, you talked about, like what other schools can add in the transfer portal. Cause it's kind of like the NFL where like, you know, you might be a, a bottom five team one year and the following year, because of who you signed in free agency or who's developed, you're winning your division. And you've seen that with like the giants this year, like they were one of the worst teams in the league. They got a new coaching staff. They started making smart decisions, and now they're what six and one or five and one. Yeah, uh, six and one. All right, relax. Six and one. Yeah. Wait, wait till the Eagles six play. And one. And we'll we'll be yeah. too. But uh, right, right, no, right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, you are right though. Like Rutgers could add some people here and there. Uh, we don't even know who the offensive coordinator is next year. This could be a totally different team. And if they're yep. still playing top ten defense or top eleven, whatever the hell it is, if they're still being a top ten defense, then add in maybe a team that scores more than like nineteen points per game. And holy shit, like, this team might be pretty decent. And it's like, all right, well, you got a good running back already. You have a future quarterback, sort of, maybe, kind of. I don't mm-hmm. know, athlete, quarterback. Um, so that, that's a tough one. Maybe you get a guy in the portal. Maybe your new OC brings a guy. Uh, but, yeah, there, it's so hard to tell now. Like, I know for, like making predictions this early is always tough. Be regardless, but now adding in the portal factor, it's like, holy, holy hell, like, I don't know what any team's going to look like. I don't know who's going to be there, what staff's going to be there at this point since Rutgers fired their OC midseason. Um, I was probably going to fire their OC if I had to guess or demote them or whatever. Uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin fired Chris this year, so it's like there's yep. another head coach that's going to change. Um, Northwestern, weird Temple. It's, it's always Temple. Virginia Tech's under a new staff. Um, who knows? Maybe Jim Harbaugh goes to the NFL. Maybe this is his year, and he just leaves. So no, no one really knows. But uh, that's that's me foreshadowing right there. I think that one's going to happen. That's just speculation. So? But uh, I think I mean you got to ride ride high. Like when you're this high, it's just like all right, just keep going. Go to the NFL. Go back. Dominate there again, maybe. Um, but yeah, no. This is a this is a pretty favorable schedule for Rutgers. Um, like you said, it could be four and one in September, which is which is huge. Um, and then it's just going to take two more, whether that be an Indiana and Maryland, whether that be maybe you sneak one against the Wisconsin or Michigan State. Who knows what Iowa looks like? Maybe you sneak that. Maybe it's a seven-win season. Maybe I'm undershooting it. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to depend on the portal, I think, and it's it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I, I see no reason why our defense isn't going to be even better next year because if you look at who we're going to lose because of they're out of eligibility, it's only you find Maja. Christian mm-hmm. Braswell and Aaron, uh, Avery Young. Like, those are the only three guys out of eligibility. And if we could keep the younger guys here via NIL deals, I don't see any reason why we don't, we won't have an elite defense. And if we put a few guys in the NFL or we get a guy, a bunch of guys who, you know, have a ton of hype going into next season, like, I don't see any reason why Aaron Lewis won't have a ton of hype. Like, we're getting a guy like Moses Walker, who probably would have played a ton Huge. this year had he been healthy. We get all our linebackers back. We could attract some guys in the portal as well to really fortify this defense. And one of those guys 
that it looks like Rutgers is probably going to go after hard is uh, got a connection to Rutgers. His younger brother, Thomas Amonqua, is a freshman cornerback. It's Charles Amonqua, who's currently at Akron. Last year, he had a fantastic season, just racking up the stats, and he had 48 tackles, four for laws. He had a sack. He had nine pass breakups. He had three interceptions, including one against Ohio State, uh, and he had a forced fumble. And he just entered the portal yesterday. Um, and it sounds like Rutgers is going to have a great shot with him. What are you hearing on Charles Amonqua? Um, so I actually talked to him today. Uh, as soon as uh, we found out uh, that he entered the portal, I reached out right away because obviously the connection right there, the Monkle brothers. Um, yeah, so he, he basically mentioned to me a bunch of different schools have followed him so far, but no one's actually <clears throat> physically reached out. Um, but I do expect him to end up at the Power 5 level. Uh, I think it's, it's not a lock that Rutgers is going to get him, but I think it's a pretty good chance Rutgers gets him. Uh, I'm intrigued to see why he went JUCO. That's going to be the big factor there because, uh, I mean, if he graduated Akron, it shouldn't matter in terms of getting yep. him qualified over at Rutgers. I know Rutgers has issues with getting JUCO guys with credits and all that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he, play, he played at Monroe College. Greg obviously knows the coaching staff over there because I think uh, the minute that Greg took over, he got Cedrice Pallion from there. Um, so, I, I mean, yeah, it, it sounds like he wants to play with his brother pretty badly. Uh now it's up to it's up to Rutgers to basically hey just give him the roster spot. Uh, I don't think they're too focused on portal stuff right now. I think that's more of an off season thing. So maybe he'll come visit in December, but that's right around the corner. It's only a month away at this point, or month and whatever five days. Um, so yeah, I, I do think Rutgers has a really good shot there, and I think that could be your first portal guy this off season. Um, now after that, that's I don't know where you go after that. There, that's that's the biggest question of the day. Yeah, it seems like we're showing a lot of interest in, you know, or maybe not. It's too, it's definitely too early to tell because so few guys have entered the mm -hmm. portal. Um, but I would expect we we knock on some quarterbacks, we knock on uh, some wide receivers, some defensive backs, um, maybe a linebacker. I think Rutgers will be uh, pretty busy in the portal this year. Um, yeah, I think you you need a lineman too. I think at this point, yeah. um, I know these young guys, everyone's like hyping them up and stuff, but you, you still need a lineman. Like you're losing JD Dorenzo at who's probably your best lineman. I think that's safe to say. Yep. Um, yeah, so I mean, you got to replace him somehow, and maybe a young guy steps up and is ready to go. Maybe you could bump Ireland Brown to guard, but I don't see him moving because he's been pretty solid, uh, solidified at that center spot. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you need, I need you need a lineman, maybe a defensive interior defensive lineman because you've seen some struggles there recently. Uh, linebacker probably don't touch, I don't think, because Moses Walker comes back, he'll probably play a significant role. Tyron Powell is back, he'll play a significant role. Uh, you you get all your linebackers back, which is nice. Maybe uh, Daryl D uh, Jawbone, Jawbone, yep. Jawbone, yeah. Uh, Jawbone. Is he, Drop him. Okay. You get him, maybe get in, hit him a little more custom. He's already played, I think, what, six games? And we know Greg yeah, loves that he's, special. He's burned his red shirt, and he came in on, like, August. It's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. He's He's been pretty good on special teams. And obviously, that's what Greg likes to do. Get him special teams, get him some reps, get him live game action. And then the next year, he'll play a significant role. Um, but, yeah, I think I think a DB makes sense. Get that slot corner locked up with Amakwa. Lose Braswell, so that kind of fills that role. Maybe get a safety to fill in for that Izian role. Um, well, Izian comes back, actually. He's got four more Oh, he does come back. Okay, never yeah. mind. I'll take it back then. Um, Avery Young we lose, though. Avery Young, which, I mean, we probably try to get a safety, but Igbenosin's kind of stepping up and taking reps away, like, every week for the most part. Maybe not yep. significant reps, but he's still taking a lot of reps at safety. He'll be a starter receiver, maybe. Running back, I think, is locked up. I think you're good there. So it's it's really, like... I guess four positions. It'd be like D line, interior, or offensive line, interior, defensive line, interior, quarterback, receiver, and then maybe another DB. Like five, yep. like about five portal spots, and I think that's about right based on the class. I think the class is only at what 13, 14 kids. Uh, yeah, somewhere around there. And yeah, so. you know, we we took so many linemen the last couple of years that it'll be interesting to see who really develops and kind of steps up between like. Jacob Allen, Kobe Asamoa, uh, Dante yes. Chin, Joe DeGroche, uh, Moneg uh, I forget his Monegro. name, Monegro, Stinnett, yeah. Taj White, and then we got some defensive linemen. We got, you know, Taj, or, uh, Jazion Harris, where does he play? Um, so, uh, DJ Allen was, you know, talked about as like this freaky athlete. Obviously, those are both 
uh, edge rushers, not interior defensive yeah. linemen. And Mo Toure's back. I forgot about him completely. Mo Toure, who, yep. who can kind of play either linebacker or edge type role. I don't know what you define. I just call it an edge, I guess, at this point. Yep. So, I mean, yeah, there, there's a lot of uh, a lot of optimism for this team next year. Yeah, I think this team's going to be really good next year <laughs> in terms of, it might not result in a big bump in wins or losses, but I think we'll be a much improved team. Because when you're playing Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan, and then somebody who's going to be good in the the Big Ten West, like it kind of caps your ceiling unless you have like a true great team. Uh, but I think we'll be in. I think I think we'll play much closer against teams like Penn. Even though we haven't played Penn State this year yet, but against Penn State and Michigan, I think we'll we'll give them a run for their money next year. Um, yeah, for certain. But do you have anything else you wanted to, to kind of go over before we sign off here? We, uh, tomorrow we're recording a uh, a preview pod for the uh, for the game this weekend with uh, the Minnesota Believe Network uh, podcast host. So that'll be in your feed tomorrow. Uh, but what else do we got going on on the site? Um, I guess uh, hoops. Hoops is this Sunday. Like everyone yeah. keeps forgetting. Like hoops is starting. Like this is it. Uh, Fairfield this Sunday is coming to the rack, Jersey Mike's, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, it's, a, it's a good benefit. If you haven't bought tickets yet, I think they're only like 10 bucks or something like that. Maybe 20 bucks if you want like the lower levels. But uh, yeah, it's a good everything. Uh, all ticket sales and proceeds are going to the Grand Foundation. Um, so that that's that's good. For, that's a huge. Um, I don't even know the words I'm thinking right now. That's a big uh, donator, moneymaker for the foundation, so that's huge. Go buy tickets if you haven't already. Uh, we'll obviously be there covering it. Um, I don't know what you'll really see out of the team, but I do know it's going to be a full-fledged game. Uh, no, None of this other BS. We heard uh, a couple UNC updates. Heard Caleb Love from UNC apparently didn't play, but that's whatever. I mean, okay. He's one of their better players, but Rutgers played really good D. Um, they won the first half, quote unquote. I think it was like 16 minute halves or something like that. So it wasn't like a full on game scrimmage, whatever you call it. But uh, Rutgers played pretty good. I think they were up 10 points in the first half, but then they lost the second half. I don't know how you want to determine that, how you want to take that. I think it's pretty good news because that is the number one preseason team in the country. So yep. yeah, pretty pretty damn good. Um, they have a really good center, our big man in Leaky Leaky Black. Um, mm -hmm. He's got all kinds of crazy NIL foundations because of his name. Or uh, NFL, <laughs> NFL funds. Jeez, I can't talk today. Um, so, yeah, um, he's nicknamed Locke by Leakey because he's a really good defender. So the fact that Rutgers was able to put up some points, whether we'll never get a box score, so we'll never know who scored per se, but they, they played pretty well from what I heard. And it was a typical Pike old Rutgers defense rebounding. And it gives both, both teams a really good test. It gives a, a UNC team a test against a really good defensive team, and it gives Rutgers a good test against the nation's number one team. So you can't really ask for a better preseason type uh, scrimmage game, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, yeah, it so sounds like a um, pretty optimistic season for Rutgers basketball fans, and I, I, I can't see a reason why they shouldn't be uh, breaking that breaking that record and be uh, the first-ever team to go – or first-ever time in program history that a team goes three back to back to back in NCAA tournaments. I can't talk today. Jesus. <laughs> no, it's all good. You're still uh, – you're recovering from an illness, so it's, it's all good. Illness. But, uh, I got two stitches now because I got my tooth went through my lip. Like I hate it. Uh, don't don't play basketball after like high school. It's just not worth. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks uh, again for tuning in. It's been another edition of the Night Report podcast. Signing off.